a two sample test for the population variance or standard deviation using the F distribution. So we need two independent random samples and the samples must come from populations which are normally distributed. If a test is given for a standard deviation they must be squared to get variances as we only test for variances. So from the two samples we work out the sample variances. One variance will be larger than the other so we label them like this. Large sample variance, small sample variance. The test statistic is the large sample variance divided by the small sample variance in this order and there's a reason for doing this which I will come back to. This is the F distribution. We always work with the right hand side of the F distribution so our critical region is always on the right so we have our right side critical value which we get from the F distribution tables. In the tables we need two values for degrees of freedom. So the sample that had the large variance, so let's say if it had eight values in the sample, so eight minus one, n minus one, we have seven degrees of freedom. And for the sample that had the smaller variance, let's say if it had six values in the sample, so six minus one, five degrees of freedom. And where the two meet will be our critical value, our right side critical value. So we may have a one-tail test, a one-tail test, or a two-tail test. For each of these we always look at the right side of the distribution, our critical region and critical values are always for the right hand side and never the left side or the left tail. And now the reason for just working out the right side is as follows. So this is probably what you were expecting, that when H1 is less than, your critical region is on the left. When H1 is not equal to, you have two critical regions, the left tail, the right tail. And when H1 is more than, you have a critical region on the right hand side. The problem with this is, is that the tables for the F distribution in the formula book, they only give you the right hand side critical values and not the left side critical values, which creates a problem. By working out the test statistic as the large value divided by the small value, this enables us to only work with the right side critical values. That's the reason for dividing in this order. If it was the small value divided by the large value, then we could work out the left side critical values, but it just complicates things. So to keep things simple, we always use this formula, large divided by small, and we always work with the right side critical values, like this. So irrespective of what we have written down for H1, we always use the right side, the right hand tail of our F distribution. Example 1, we have our two samples, so highlighted in blue, sample size of 10, sample variance 9, and highlighted in green, sample size 13, sample variance 25. And we're doing a test to see if the variance for B is greater than A at the 5% level of significance. So H0 and H1 are these. Summarising some of the data. 
the test statistic, the large value is divided by the smaller one. So we're dividing variances here to get 2.78. In the F distribution tables, we always look up the large sample variances degrees of freedom along the top. So that was the large one, degrees of freedom 12, we look up 12 along the top. And for the small one, degrees of freedom is 9, that goes down the side, which we can write like this, F12, 9. The first value is along the top, the next value is down the side. And from the tables, our critical value, the right side critical value, is 3.073. Our test statistic, 2.78, is less than 3.073. We're going to accept H0 and the conclusion in context. Example 2, our sample here is of size 11. We'll call this one X. And the second sample is of size 9 which we will call Y. So we have 10 degrees of freedom for the first one, 8 degrees of freedom for the second one. And we're using a 10% level of significance and we're testing to see if the variances for the two populations are the same. So this is a two-tailed test. So H0 and H1. And the point to mention here is that we don't need to know what the actual population variances are to carry out the test. Yeah, these values for the population variances are not given anywhere. What we've got are the sample variances, or we calculate the sample variances. So our two samples, X and Y, and the formula to work out the sample variance is on page 12 in the AQA formula book. And here's the formula. We're dividing by n minus 1. The test statistic. The large value divided by the small one. As this is the large value, 8 degrees of freedom along the top. This is the small value, 10 degrees of freedom down the side. So our F distribution tables give us a critical value of 3.072. The test value 4.05 is greater than 3.072. We will reject H0. And the table that I've just used is this. Two-tailed tests at significance level 10%. You don't have to split the significance level into 5% and 5%. The table takes care of it. And here's the critical value. 8, 10. Conclusion. So we do the test. You either reject H0 or you accept H0. If you've accepted H0, you're saying that the population variances are equal for the two populations. So this could be the first part of a question, where the second part is then to do a two-sample t-test for the mean. And one of the conditions for a two-sample t-test for the mean is that the population variances are equal. And we've just shown that they're equal by accepting H0. So that, this might be the next part of a question. And remember, to do this test for the variances, we don't need to know what the actual population variances are. Yeah, if we look back through the two examples, so example one, there's no mention of the population variance here. The values are not given. And likewise with exam example two, 
the population variances are not given even though we've said that the population variances are equal in H0 but the actual values are not given so by accepting H0 we know that the population variances are equal so that condition is met for doing the t-test for the mean using two samples and the population variances are not given so that would be another condition for the t-test so you would use the sample variances to carry out that test <laughs>